Oh, hey, how you doing? So listen, I wanted to make a video for you to talk to you about my a weekend review, right? This has been probably one of my best trading weeks for 2019. I had a really awesome trading week um, this week. And I wanted to make a video for you to talk about the trades that I took this week, why I took them, and what was my thought process behind them, and end with a really important topic that I want to talk about. Uh, but first, I want to thank you for uh, if you were able to join me in my live class. I did a four-day training, four-day class. You know, day one, I talked about technical analysis, the truth about trading and the stock market. And then day two, I talked about Forex trading. Day three, I talked about options trading. And then day four ended with the most important topic, which is the mindset, the trading psychology. So I hope you were able to join me and attend the class, right? I really hope if you did, you benefited from it. You got something out of it. I'm pretty sure you did. I mean, I thoroughly enjoy teaching the class. It's been a while since I, you know, did like live teaching. And uh, for me, I really, really enjoyed it. And more importantly, I really hope that you got something out of it. Now, this has been an awesome trading week. And if you were in the trading room, then, you know, you know how good this week was. And uh, it's a plenty of opportunity. So hope you were able to join me in some of those trades. I did post them and live call them in the room. I also posted on my Twitter account. And uh, so again, I hope you were able to join me in those trades. If you weren't, not to worry, I'm going to recap all those trades. You can learn from it. So the next time these patterns and strategies, you know, present themselves to you, you're able to take opportunity of these patterns. So stay tuned because at the end of the video, I want to talk about something uh, which is pretty important, you know, which is about getting filled on the trades. So definitely stay tuned for that. Um, and yeah, the trading psychology class. Uh, the recording, unfortunately, we had some technical difficulties, but not to worry, I saved the recording, so I'm going to edit the video and I'm going to upload that shortly. Uh, if you missed attending any of those three events, the recordings of that are posted on our YouTube channel, Options Webinar, Forex Webinar, and the Stocks Webinar. Highly recommend you take a look and watch the webinar before, because uh, we're thinking about removing them from the YouTube page. So again, there'll be this will be the time to go ahead and watch it. All right, so let's dive in. And let's start with the markets first. Where is the markets headed? You know, where are the markets headed? I mean, the markets, as we can clearly see, are heading towards new high territory, right? You look at this here. Um, we had the sell-off, right? Look at the markets. We had a, um, you know, pretty awesome move all throughout of 2018. And then towards the end of 2018, we decided to give it up. But then the, the way this market reversed is super strong, right? This is a V reversal, right? It went down and boom, V reversal back up. These V reversals are really strong, which could potentially signal further upside in the marketplace, right? Uh, this is like a bungee cord, right? You remember if you've ever done bungee jumping, you bungee jump, you go down and boom, the bungee cord pulls you right back. That's what the market did. It just kind of fell bungee cord right back up and we're approaching the all time highs on the market here. Um, and I did talk about it, right? Uh, uh, it, there's been really good short opportunities. If you're in our swing trading newsletter, if you're a member of my private Twitter account where I actually call all my trades, um, swing trades and options trades. So this was a really good trade for us here. We had some put options, which we you know made about 100% on. We had some good money here. We made money all the, all the way through these declines. But one thing you wanna notice, right? Look at how much market moves up and then only a slight pullback, right? Small move up. My big move up, small pullback, big move up, small pullback again. So the pullbacks are very small compared to how we're going up. This is a sign of strength, right? Markets got back above all their moving averages, 20 crossed the 50 again. We're back in an uptrend and we're probably going to head into all time highs, but it's not going to be as clean. You know, it's not going to be a clean move up and it's not been clean here, right? Little consolidation, choppy period, gap downs, gap ups. And right here, you see the bars are getting smaller and narrower, right, compared to before. Right? The candles, the ranges are getting smaller. And that's what happens when we approach all-time highs because people are getting hesitant, right? People are hesitant. You can see that here. When we had this decline, as we were coming back up, look how small the bars got, right? So same thing's happening right now. Uh, there's indecision. Some people are like, are we gonna fail here? Are we gonna pull back? But I think most likely what's gonna happen is you're gonna chop around a little bit before continuing towards all-time highs. So that's kind of my market overview here. Uh, but let's dive in. Let's take a look at the trades that I traded. Again, awesome trading week. I mean, I wish every trading week's like this, but it's not always going to be like this. You know, there's ups and downs in trading, but this was a sure up for me. So let's take a look. You know, Monday I took um, three trades. All right, two winners, one loser. So first trade I took on Monday was GE short. So you see here on the GE, um, GE gap down on Monday. See this gap down. 
So the gap down was obviously a top watch for me because you're gapping down below the 21 EMA and the 50 EMA, gapping below both moving averages, breaking under the support, and then room to head over to the next support, which we're already there now. So on this day, it gapped down. And let me show you the intraday chart so you can learn the strategies that I traded on the GE. So right here on Monday, if I go into my one minute chart here, let me go all the way back a couple days ago. Um, and again, I've been getting a lot of emails for people to make uh, trade recap videos. So I thought, you know what, rather than doing a bunch of videos every day, I'm just going to do one big video weekly recap. And uh, it's been good. So GE on Monday, if you've been with us for any length of time, if you're in the trading room, if you watched our YouTube videos, you know the setup. You can probably see it in front of you. So right here is where I shorted GE. This is known as a three bar play. We have free videos on this setup on YouTube and we also are teach this on in all our courses in detail. Um, so again, three bar play, shorted right over under this green candle, put my stop right above here and we got a beautiful drop, target hit, quick trade, done. That's it, literally. Because again, gap down under support, room to go into the next support. Let's short it here, three bar play, goes down, covered it, right? Awesome trade. The next one I had on Monday was Snapchat. This was a losing trade. Um, Snapchat on Monday. So on this day when it gapped um, gapped up like that. So on that day, I was trying to... Um, I mean, I, I should have really made money on it, but I ended up uh, losing on it. So I want to recap that too so you guys can get the, you know, the full picture. It's not any benefit to you if I just talk about my winning trades. That's why I also want to talk about losing trades. Um, so Snapchat on that day, I mean, it started off as a pretty good trade. I I wanted to trade it in the morning right over here, right? It broke out. I was looking for a much bigger target. I was looking for like 1270 or something as a target. It didn't get to my target and, you know, ended up pulling all the way back down. And, you know, the trade didn't work out. So it stopped out for me. This was a losing trade. Um, the other one that I did on Monday, which was an awesome trade, was Apple. Right? So Apple on Monday, you can see here. It was clearing this range, right, that it couldn't clear, it broke out on that day, right? So on that day, I picked Apple up long because of the breakout on the daily chart. Uh, so I want you to notice one thing while I talk. Like, you will notice when I trade, the daily charts are always good looking, right? You, you, meaning, like, the daily charts are either breaking out, breaking out of a range, clearing support or resistance, and then have clear room to move higher or lower based on the bias, right i never just trade inside a range like you will never see me trading apple anywhere on these days i will trade on this day when it gets above resistance right i will trade it on uh, maybe this day when it gaps up and clears this resistance and then you will not tr see me trading apple any of these days ever because there's no there's no clean daily chart i might trade it on this day when it gapped up above the 200 ema right and i'll trade on the breakout but you will never see me trading apple on any of these days which are inside days or inside ranges, right? You never want to trade in a box. You always want to trade when you break out of a box, right? Never want to trade this box. You want to trade when you go outside the box. Same thing here. Don't trade the box. Trade when you go outside the box, right? So that's kind of what I want to talk about. So you, because everything starts with a daily chart. If you don't have the right daily chart, no matter how great, you know, your um, intraday pattern is, it's not going to work. The daily chart doesn't support it. So on this day, Apple, you see uh, Apple actually gapped down a little bit that day. But after gapping down, it immediately came back up, right, and took out the previous day's high and then broke out. So let me actually show you the five minute chart because you can see it much better on, on, you know, on that day. So look at the five and 15 minute charts on that day, right, on this day when we traded it. Look at that, right? What do you, what do you see? Ask yourself the question, what do you see? What I see is this base, right? That app can get above it, can get above it, can get above it, can get above it, can get above it. But all this while, it's making higher low. So what's happening is the sellers are still here, but the buyers are slowly working their way up. Buyers are inching in. Suddenly, buyers take all the seller's order, stock breaks out. So on that day, I noticed what Apple was doing. All right, let me go back again to Monday here. All right, again, I want you guys to like this video and hit the subscribe button if you... Um, if you learn something, if you don't, that's fine. If you hit the dislike button, then 
<laughs> All right. Anyways, <laughs> so you know, Apple gap down, moved up. You know, put in a big red bar. So this was a red bar that was a signal for me to go long, because you got a red bar, and then look what happened. Immediately, that red bar got engulfed with a green candle. So the sellers stepped up briefly. Buyers are like, hell no, we're going up, right? And then you get a breakout, right? Breakout. So I bought this apple right here as it broke out of the range. We got a nice candle and then it chopped around for a little bit, right? Kind of choppy, 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 chopped around, but then it again broke out of this pattern right over here, right? So I was still at all the way and then finally I actually got out early. I got out right over here because again, I got in at $197 and it went to like $198.50, $1.50 move or two to one. You know, two two to one reward to risk ratio, and I was out. I, I could care less if it goes higher. I made my money right over here, so that was a great trade on Apple. So that was Monday, just three trades, right? One winner on GE made two to one, Apple made two to one, and Snapchat I lost one to one, uh, one R. Tuesday I took two trades, both sh on the short side, on Tuesday. So on, um, let's see here. All right, so on the first one I want to talk about is Win Resort. So see how Win has already been extended, right? Green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, green bar, and then a gap up. And then look what it did after a gap up. It, you know, gapped down the next day. So this is called an island reversal pattern, right? For a day trade, it makes for a great pattern because also it, the stock is very extended. So when on that day gap down, you know there's going to be some people who are getting going to get stopped out of their longs and some people who are going to take short opportunities. And that's exactly what I did. On that day, I shorted win. And I know Jared made a video on that already earlier on win he was trying to get win also a lot of people in the chat room were trying to get it but a lot of people were not able to get filled and i also want to talk about that so stay tuned till the end of the video but look at that setup man ah oh, beautiful like jesus christ three bar play again but maybe like a four bar play you get a big red bar in the morning green bar then tries to go up doji so i shorted it right here under 142 put my stop loss right over here right 140 to 66 and then boom, red bar, red bar, red bar. And I was like, I think I was out like right over here. I was out. I got my two to one reward to risk out. Awesome trade on Win Resorts on that day. Uh, the next uh, trade on the same day was X Steel, right? X Steel, look at X Steel. Can get below this area, can get below this area, can get below this area, can get below it, right? What do you get? A base. Then on that day, on Monday or Tuesday, it gapped down below support right so again ask yourself the question where can it go to if it breaks support right well if it breaks this box it can probably go into the next pivot right over here where exactly where x is sitting right now so on that day we know it could fall down there so that's where we look for day trading opportunities right so on that day on x steel let me show you the setup and as soon as you look at it you will understand it immediately why i wanted to short this thing and that was a brilliant trade for us on that day so yeah look at that in the morning it um, tries to go up, right? As it tried to go up, look what happened. Topping tail, red candle. The the ideal setup actually was right over here. You could have shorted it right under the these two candles. Put your stop above here. I actually missed it, right? I actually missed that. But I was keeping a close eye on X Steel. So it tried to go up, right? Came all the way down, took out the low of the day. And then this was my signal, right? Tries to go up, pierces the VWAP, but can't get above it immediately turns into a bearish candle. So think about this for a second. At th this topping tail candle at one point was a full big green candle. Sellers knocked it all the way back down below everything. So that was a failed pattern, right? Failure pattern, right? Tried to go up, couldn't. So now we know when if it goes down here, what it's gonna do? Downtrend, right? Like this, that's what a downtrend is. And that's exactly what it did. So I shorted it actually, I got a little bit late I shorted it right under the low of the day, right here, and I put my stop loss right above that topping tail candle. And then, as expected, it continued the downtrend. Beautiful downtrend, can get above the VWAP, and boom, I was out right over here. Again, a two to one profit, awesome trade on X Steel on Tuesday. Wednesday, I only took a, you know, Wednesday, I only took one trade, which was first solar. Um, Ah, beautiful man look at first solar so first solar by the way you see here first solar is in a channel on a daily chart right top bottom top bottom top bottom top bottom top and then on Wednesday it gaps up above that channel breaking out breaking out right and another thing I want to show you 
look at this look at this zone right first solar can't get above this zone for like a whole year almost more than a year right to all of 2018 couldn't get above it 2019 same thing tried to get above couldn't get above couldn't get above couldn't so this is an important resistance area so on that day when it gapped up not only did it break that channel to the upside it also broke this important resistance level which it's been struggling to get into right and then i zoom out what do i see i see this was a straight move down so there's no resistance there right the next resistance is all the way up here so that day i know okay that's going to be a great day trade so then what i did on the first solar is i'll show you the setup here yeah, you can already see the setup, right? Look at that. Tried to go higher, come down, tried to go lower. Sellers came in, tried to knock it down, but immediately turned back up and then got back above the VWAP. So what did I do? I bought that breakout. Look at that. It's in this box, right? It's in this box, in the range. I bought that breakout above that range right over here, placed my stop loss right over there, and then look what First Solar did. Started the uptrend as expected. Boom, 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 boom. And then right over here, I was out. Got my two to one trade. Awesome. Done. All right. So that's Wednesday. Okay. Uh, Thursday, I took uh, four trades, which I'm going to talk about. But before, I'm going to take a little coffee break and then I'll resume this video. Okay. So on to where were we? Thursday. All right. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Four trades. Let's go with the loser first. This was my second loser of the week. Bank of freaking America. Again, one of those trades that was good, but not really. <laughs> so, Bank of America. I was looking to buy this thing on um, on this uh, this day right over here. This day, okay, which was uh, Thursday. So, I saw it in the morning. I actually wanted to trade this in the morning. I wanted to buy it like over the high of the day when it kind of went down and came back up, right? And did this. Again, I have a video on this setup on YouTube. It's called the most explosive day trading pattern. I think it has like what, 10, 20,000 views. I don't even know. Um, so this is my favorite pattern in the world, but I missed this pattern, you know? I missed it. I missed the morning entry and this thing just went without me. But when it came back down right over here, I was like, you know, this could be like one of those trades where it Maybe it does like a bull flag, right? Something like this and then breaks out. That's what I was hoping for. Uh, so I bought this thing, the Bank of America, right over, where to buy it? Yeah, right over here. Okay. <laughs> right over there. It went up a little bit. It was looked like, you know, it was looking like it's going to get going, but then it just died on me. So that was a stop out. Lost money on that. Uh, my second losing trade of the week. Uh, but then I made it up. It was still a freaking awesome day. I made money on a fast, same day. Again, notice something, right? I'm never trading the stock when it's stuck in a range. Why would I? What's the point, right? And then on this day, it gapped up above resistance. That's the day I want to trade it because there's nothing resistance, no resistance holding it, right? So then I go to my intraday chart on a beautiful gap up, level two gap up from the PTS course. And look what I did. VWAP video, right? VWAP video. I have a video on VWAP on our YouTube channel. Pretty popular video. I think, uh, I don't even know. It's probably got 15, 20,000 views now. So, um, yeah, that was a VWAP setup. In the morning, it showed me how strong it was. And then it tried to go lower and then showed me that, hey, I am strong. The buyer stepped up. Okay. And then look what it did. Tried to go lower again. Buyer stepped up again. All right. So look what it's doing. Buyers were originally here. Then this came here, and then they came here. So what are buyers doing? Buyers are stepping up, right? And then finally here, it broke above the VWAP, and I bought it long. Look what it did. Went up, pulled back, went up, pulled back, and went up. And then right here, I was out. My target was hit, got two to one. So in a nutshell, I mean, this could also be known as a, like, um, like a wedge pattern, you know, something like that something like this, right? Like a wedge triangle pattern. I bought the breakout and this thing just went and was an awesome day trade for me on this day. Uh, the other trade I had was, um, this was this was the trade that was really annoying. Okay, really annoying trade, <laughs> Weight Watchers. And really annoying, like it almost made me wanna break my keyboard on that day, but luckily I didn't because I didn't have a spare keyboard, I realized, so there's no point in breaking it. 
this was annoying for two reasons. Okay, one reason, which I'll you'll find out now, and but there's another reason which I'll also go over. So this trade, I called in the trading room. I um, shorted it right here. So see that this was in a base consolidation. So after after it tried to go up, it came all the way back down and started basing sideways, right? So we already know the daily chart super weak. Look at the daily chart. Again, daily charts in this range. I'm not going to touch it on any of those days in the range. But then it breaks outside the box. So it's going to go lower, right? So then I shorted it right here. Okay, when it broke down, put my stop loss right above here, and this thing dropped like a rock. Boom, boom, boom. Guess what my target was? $17.54. Look where it went to. It went to the low of the day is $17.55. It literally missed my target by one cent. One cent. And then it came all the way back up. It didn't hit my target after that. It didn't even hit my stop loss. So I just closed it at the end of the day uh, for like a small loss. But it was a disappointment because it missed my target by one cent. And here's why it's annoying. Here are the disadvantages of running a trading room, okay? And those of you in the trading room, you know what I'm talking about, right? Really, not cool, guys, not cool, okay? So this is the disadvantage of running a trading room, you know? And I'm reconsidering my thoughts over running a trading room. It's costing me money. So I posted my target in the trading room, 1754. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to get filled at 1754. And suddenly it just bounced at 1755 and went up. And everybody in chat room saying, hey, great trade on Weight Watchers. Thank you, Unmole. Thank you for the trade. Great trade. You know what everybody did? <laughs> my order is 1754. Everyone else put their order at 55. Everybody in the trading room front ran me. They front ran my order. I'm at 54. Everybody in the room got out at 55 and it bounced. Everybody got out but me. So, you know, that's the disadvantage of running a trading room, you know. And then and since some people might say, "Oh, why did you why did you not get out when it didn't hit your target? Why don't you just get out like 1756?" Right? Why don't you get out when it was bouncing? Well, because I am a disciplined trader. Okay, I stick to my rules. When I get in a trade, right, I enter the trade, I put my stop loss, and I put my target, and then I don't touch it. I don't touch it. So either a trade will hit my target, or either it will stop me out. If it doesn't hit my target, or doesn't stop me out, I will just close it at the end of the day. That's my trading plan. Most people are like, oh, why don't you just kind of trail this pivot right over here? Right. Well, because I have tracked it in a spreadsheet, trailing pivots versus just letting it go and letting it go always wins. And then you say, oh, why don't you get out when it broke this trend line? Well, because I've tracked it and the, just letting it go always wins in the long run. There will be trades where you could have trailed your stop and, you know, saved yourself some money. There will be days where you could save money like that. There could also be weeks or maybe even a month where if you just trailed your stop loss, you made more money. But long term, long term, six months, 12 months. Just getting in, putting my target, two to one, putting my stop loss always makes more money than anything else, right? Anything else. Most traders feel like raising or lowering the stop loss, but I'm telling you, just put your targets and forget about it, right? Because again, let's go over um, the trades I talked about earlier, right? Like Apple on Monday, all right? Apple on Monday when I traded it um, on right over on this day, okay? <laughs> so... I got in an apple right over here, right? Now, what if I trailed my stop loss or went to break even? There you go. I'm out break even and I missed out on all of this, right? That's that's another thing you got to keep in mind. And then, um, what was that the FSLR? Yeah. FSLR. Um, well, FSLR kind of went, but that's another example. Let's say you got in here, right? And it popped up, you put your stop at break even. Look at these bottoming tails. This would have taken you out break even, and you missed out on this. So I think when you go break even, you risk becoming a break even trader because you have a lot of trades that just break even, right? And these shakes can shake you out. Whereas if you just let it go, you will ignore all of this and end up hitting your target, right? A lot of people kind of get in and then they get out here and then they go and they miss out on it, the big run, right? So I don't miss out on the big run, all right? Um, same thing on. What was that? F FSLR, well, this is the one I'm talking about. Um, Fastenal. 
Did I already review that? Yeah, I already reviewed that one. Now here's another example. Right here is another example. Right, you traded it right over here. It popped up. You're like, okay, I'm gonna bring my stop to break even. Look what it did. This bar right over here, you would have been out break even. All right, and you would have missed out on this run. So that's why I don't raise or lower or trail my stop. I just let it go. Either you work, either you don't. Right, and I let the odds take care of itself. All right, now that was Weight Watchers. Pretty annoying trade. Uh, but I would have hit my target if you guys did not front run me in the trading room. All right, then this was another trade I did on um, Thursday, same day. KDP, okay, KDP, Keurig, <laughs> Dr. Pepper, whatever company is. So we see here support, right? This this box here, right? See that box? All right, and that box is also pretty important uh, resistance and support area. You can see that from my yellow line here. So you see on the yellow line that this area used to be resistance. Can't get above it. Can't get above it. Right, can't get above it. Then that resistance area on here became support, and it became support again. And then on this day, we gapped under that line, right? Gapped under support. So when we're gapping under support, and not only that, we're gapping below both moving averages. Where can we go? Well, we can probably drop somewhere in here, right? That's probably where we can go to. So on this day, on the gap down day, I shorted it. Let me show you that. Brilliant setup, and this will be a great example for most of you guys. All right, so I shorted KDP again. Same thing as a Weight Watchers. It tries to go up, right, and it comes down. Okay, then tries to go up, then it comes down. It tries to go up, fails, fails. Simple as that. So I shorted it right under this support, put my stop loss right above this resistance area. This thing broke down. So again, it broke down, right? What are people saying? Oh, great. Let me go break even. Let me put my stop at break even. Great. Put it. You can put it. I'm not going to touch it. I'm just going to let it go. Either it works or it doesn't. There you go. You're out. Break even. Right? Or you trailed your stop. You took a small profit or a small loss. And then look what you missed out on. Because it chopped around forever. Right? If you were raising and lowering your stops, you would be chopped around here. Whereas just let it go and boom. Got a beautiful drop. At the end of the day, right, just go, went vertical, and then right here, I was out. That was my target, 26.68. Again, two to one trade, done. Okay. So that was a pretty good um, trade for me on KDP. Um, today I did two trades. Both of them hit target. EOG and BABA. Let's go to the first one. Again, you can already see it. Look at BABA, right? Resistance area, it can get above it, can get above it, can get above it, can get above it, can get above it. Today, finally, gaps up above resistance. So it got above it. Room to go higher. In the morning, I found a three bar play pattern, put my order to buy it right over here, put my stop loss right under here. Three bar play, textbook, textbook setup, and look at Baba. Boom, went up. I'm out of here. Target hit, two to one. Awesome trade. Now, next one I did today was EOG. <laughs> Again, notice something, guys. Notice something. I never traded this stock anywhere in here. But now I see resistance can get above it, can get above it, can get above it. We should record this, by the way, right? This should be like a sound bite. Can get above it, can get above it, can get above it, can get above it, can get above it. Oh, gapped up. Got above it. Where can it go to? Zoom out. It can probably now that it's above this box, it can probably go to the top of this box. That's the target, right? So this morning, what do I do? Three bar play, guys, three bar play. I don't know why you guys are not doing it. We have four videos on YouTube for free on this setup. It's covered in every single course as well. I don't know why people don't do it. Three bar freaking play. Red bar, green bar, red bar, green bar. I'm in long right over here. Put my stop loss right over there. Beautiful pop. But it did not hit my target because my target was 104.80. Right? 104.80 was my target. It went to 104 and then pulled back. Well, here you go. Oh, and more. Why don't you trail stop? Why don't you raise your stop under this pivot? Right? Why don't you go to break even? Well, there you go. You're out break even. Right? You're out break even. Where I... 
I kept my stop loss in, put my target, and I just walked away. And then look what it did. Chopped everybody out, got everybody out for a small loss or a break even. And then eventually, at the end of the day, this thing, boom, right over here, um, popped up. 104.80 was my target. And then right about there, I'm out. Uh, two to one trade on EOG. So that's that. It was super phenomenal trading week. I mean, I did what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, right? So let me count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So I took twelve trades this week. All right. I had ten winners and two losers. Actually, two and a half losers. Three losers, let's just say. Because Weight Watchers, I, I mean, hit the target, but I missed it. So I ended up losing a little bit on it anyway. So I would say I lost money on Bank of America. I lost money on Snapchat. I lost money on uh, Weight Watchers. Just a little bit, not a full loss. I even lost a little bit playing around with Lyft, but that was nothing. It was a small size. But then everything else was a winner. Apple winner, 2-1, to one. GE, Snapchat, right, GE winner, uh, Snapchat loss, win winner, XDeal winner, FSLR winner, Bank of America loss, Weight Watchers small loss, KDP winner, Fast winner, EOG winner, Baba winner. Now, this is not normal, okay? I don't win this often, to be honest, you know, because I don't want you to think, oh, well, look at that. He just keeps winning. No. Last week wasn't good. Last week actually had a lot more losing trades than winning trades last week. Last week was not good, right? But this week has been great. And this is what I always talk about is that sticking to your strategy, right? Sometimes the strategy doesn't work. And then suddenly the strategy starts working, right? And then sometimes it doesn't work. Sometimes it starts working again, right? But as long as you keep following the strategy, <coughs> what's going to happen? This is what's going to happen right here. If you keep following it, your equity curve of your trading account is going to look something like this. Sometimes it doesn't work, sometimes it works. But as long as when it works, you make more, right? And when it doesn't work, you lose less. Over time, your account balance is going to go up. Here's what most people do. Losing week. Oh, let's change the strategy. Let's go to another strategy. Now, that strategy has a losing week, right? And then you're like, oh, let me do my original strategy. And then that strategy has a losing week again, <laughs> Right? Whereas if you just stick to the strategy, you will stick through the ups and downs of trading and over time you're going to make money. What most people do is they do the strategy, doesn't, right? They, let's say they look at a strategy. Let's say they look at my strategy and they let like, unmost strategy work really good this week. Let me do that. And let's say next week that strategy doesn't do well. Now you're down, right? And then you're like, let me change the strategy. You change the strategy, look at somebody else's strategy and now because he's winning, and then that strategy starts losing. And then this original strategy, if you did it on the second week, that would have worked. Then you're like, let me do that again. And then you do that, but that's not the week. So it's like people keep jumping around in circle and they get stuck in a hamster wheel of trading. But if you just stick to your gun, stick to your plan, over time it will work. Okay. And this is the whole lesson for today is to find your strategy, stick to it, and just freaking stick to it. That's all I can say. Um, the other thing I want to talk about is um, confidence. You know, like people don't have confidence in their trading. I've noticed that, right? People are not confident in what they like and they don't like. Because here's the thing. EOG, okay? EOG. Some people were like, oh, I missed, I forgot to put my order in. I missed it. And it went up, green bar, right? And then it pulled back and then it went back up again. I'm like, okay, now you must be in it, right? Because you missed the entry, but look at that. It came all the way back down. So if you kept your order in, you would have got filled. They're like, no, I canceled my order. And then it worked. I'm like, why did you cancel the order? They're like, oh, I thought it was coming down. I'm like, but if you got in originally here, wouldn't you st still be in? They're like, yeah, but you know, blah, blah, blah. And then same thing with the Baba. Some people were like, oh, I didn't see it in time. You know, I saw your call a little bit late. I missed it. Okay. But then if you, if you missed it, if you just put your order in, let's say you didn't get it, but you put your order in, look what this bar did. Came all the way down and would have filled you. Right? So just keep your order in. Don't worry about you missing a trade. If the trade that you want to get in is still valid and it hasn't hit your target. So you also have to assume every single trade. Let's say I'm already in it. Right? Let's say you're in it. Would you still be in? You're like, yeah, I would still be in. Then why are you not putting your order in? If the stock hasn't hit your target, any pullback is just a gift for you to get in. Right? Same thing here. Some people were like, oh, K you know, KDP. I, I didn't uh, I didn't get the KDP on, on that day. Right? Some people got it. A lot of people in the chat room made money doing it. Some people were like, I didn't get it. But wait. Right? Let's say you didn't get it. Let's say you missed. Okay? Let's say you missed this breakout. Breakdown. You haven't hit your target yet. 
if you just kept your order in, you are in right over here, right? Right over here. And then you can stay in. It even came down, it came up again to give you another shot. Hey, get me, get, get, get in me, get in me. All right. That doesn't sound right, by the way, but you know, not get in me, but you know, get in the stock. And then you could have uh, lived through this. You could have, you know, been in this decline. All right. Here's another example on X steel, right? Example of the same thing where some people were like, oh yeah, you know, I saw your order. You put it in here, but I, I missed it and it already dropped. I'm like, okay, yes, it dropped, but just keep your freaking order in. Why are you canceling it? The trade hasn't hit target. It's still valid. If you kept your order in, you got multiple chances to get back in. If you missed it, don't cry about it. You pulled your order in. I didn't do it, right? Um, same thing on um, even the um, the win, right? A lot of people did not get filled on the win. But here's my question. Here's the important lesson, <clears throat> Okay. So when, when we were trading it at that time, okay, when we were trading win at the time in the, on that day, first of all, there was no way in hell you could have got filled at 142. I mean, let me just get this straight. So I call this trade short 142 and stop lot 142.66. But there's no way in hell you got filled at 142, right? You didn't. Nobody did. Neither did I. Neither did Jared. I mean, a lot of people didn't get filled at all right but for me here's the thing when we were trading win at that time you got to ask yourself the question what's the spread okay what is the spread and this is an important lesson i want you to write it down okay you if you're when you're getting in a stock you're using what you're using a stop limit order right stop limit order correct everybody got that now the question is how much limit to give it right how much limit to give it some people were like, oh, I gave it 142, 141.95. You gave it five cents. <clears throat> okay. So you gave $142 stock, five cent limit. How do you expect to get filled? Right. Some people were like, I gave it 15 cents. I did, still didn't get filled. But hey, the spread on the stock, right? The level two, the bid and the ask, right? The bid and the ask, it had a 35 cent spread at the time, right? So the minimum you give a stock when you use a stop limit order is the spread. So you have to give it at least the spread, at least, right? At least the spread. So I personally give it two to three times the spread. So if there's a, a stock that has a one cent spread, I'll probably give it three cent limit, right? If the stock has two cent spread, I'll probably give it, you know, six cents limit, right? If a stock has 10 cents spread, I'll probably give it 30 cents limit. Right. If a stock has 35 cents, you should at least give it one to three times the spread, but at least give it the freaking spread. Right. You're not going to get filled at 142. There's no way. Everybody's trying to short at 142. Right. But then here's the thing. If you gave it at least the spread, you would have probably got filled at 141.70. That's where I got filled. Right. I put my order to short at 142. I got filled at 141.70. Okay. That's where I got filled. So 30 cent late fill, but I got filled. Right. So if you also gave it 35 cent limit, you would have also probably got filled at 70. If not 70, the latest you would have got filled is 65. Right. But if the, if you're looking to make one, two dollars of a drop on a stock, it doesn't matter if you give it 35 cents. Right. We're looking to make two bucks of a drop. So at least give it 35 cents. At least give it the spread. All right. That's a pretty important lesson because here's how level two works. Right. Here's how the market works. Okay. Here's how the market works. There's a level two, okay? Right over here, it's got the bid, right, on this side, and it's got the offer on this side, right? So now the bid is at 142, okay? And the offer, that says at 142.35. Right, 132.35 is the offer. So the 35 cent spread. So when it breaks 142, if the sp spread stays the same at 140, uh, 35 cents, what's the next print? 141, what, 65? Yeah, 141.65 ideally will be the next, you know, um, the drop. So there's no way you're going to get filled at 142, 141.99, 141.98. It's a 35 freaking spread. So it's going to drop straight down to 65 or 70. That's where you're going to expect to fill. So you give it, got to give it at least the spread, okay? Now here's the thing. Some people were like, oh shit, it dropped, I missed it. 
But then this bar, and I can watch it in real time, okay? This bar, when it went down, it went down to 141.12. But then look at this bottoming tail. It actually came back up as high as 141.80. Now here's the thing. If you did not cancel your order, if you were a confident trader, okay, if you're a confident trader, you didn't cancel your order, and you kept it, let's say you gave it, let's say you gave it 30 cents, right? So your order would have been 141.70. So you would already have a sell limit order of limit at 141.70, right? So when it came back up to 141.80, it would have already have filled you at 70. So now you would be in the stock at 141.70, and you could enjoy this drop and profit on this drop. Most people are like, oh, I didn't get filled and I canceled the order. You know what you sound like? You sound like a spoiled kid. Seriously. You sound like a spoiled kid where you say, oh, I didn't get filled. You know, I, I wanted it at 142. I didn't get it, so I'm not going to trade it. <laughs> right? Then you don't get this. Right? Keep your order in. A lot of times, if you don't get filled when the stuff actually breaks out, you will get filled on the pullback as this currency or the stock moves in your favor. Most people are like, oh, shit, I missed it. They canceled the order where it would have pulled back and filled you and you missed out. So all these trades that I'm calling, right, you would have got filled on without a doubt. The only way you don't get filled is you're slow at your order entry, right? Now, if you missed it, but if you put your order in and you kept it there until it hits your target, 99% of the trades will pull back and fill you, right? Some of them will pull back and fill you and then stop you out. That's part of the game. But you got to follow the plan long term. So that's kind of the lesson that I wanted to go over is that if the trade is still valid, if it hasn't hit your stop loss or haven't hit your target, keep the order in. Most of the time, they will come back and fill you. So don't cancel the order. When you cancel the order, you showcase that you're not confident in your trade. You don't believe in your trade. And, you know, you're like, oh, I don't know about that. And then you miss out on those trades. Right. I never cancel my order until the stock hits my target. Right. If it, if I'm looking, let's say when this is where I want to get in. Right. If I'm looking to get here as a target, right, and it drops down here, why would I cancel my order? Maybe it does this and fills me and heads to my target. You know what I mean? So this is what I wanted to go over. I have a few more video ideas. I think the next video I'm going to make is a really important topic that I always get. People keep asking me about hard stop losses versus mental stop losses. We'll talk about that in the next video. So again, hope you guys enjoyed this review. Awesome trading week. You know, thanks for tuning in and I hope you learned something here. And um, yeah, stay tuned for the next videos. Uh, like the video and subscribe if you learned something. If you didn't learn something, what can I say? But I'm sure you did. So. <laughs>